Well, good morning. Well, at least it's good morning here. Uh, thank you for coming back to the Mariah Center. Uh, my name is Kevin Wilson, as you know. And um, took a little time last night to take a look at that planet alignment that I talked about in the uh, first video. So I didn't get done with everything. Um, and then actually when I sat down and started putting some things together, things began to unfold and connect. And this is just such a beautiful story that um, it's going to take a little time. But that's okay. That's why we're here, is we're to understand the who, what, when, where, and why we are. Who we were meant to be. How do we get back to where we were. You know, it's such an incredible story. And some of it is even just, it, it's hard to fathom. And that's why many people out there think it's fairy tale and think it's myth. And while others will you know, really take it to heart and understand that there's more to this life than our physical environment. And I'm already getting off on a tangent. Um, when I talk to you here today, I'm actually speaking off the cuff because I just try to speak as God inspires me to just to talk to you. That's, that's all I'm really interested in is, is, is letting you know that I'm just a real person just like you are, um, but maybe I have taken time to dive in depth into what's going on. And I've actually been told by people that I read too much into things. So, you know, if that is a gift that God has given me, I'll take it. Because if I can read into it and share it with you, then uh, maybe that's my purpose. So, that's what this is about. We're talking about the Christmas story. Today is 12 22 of 2020. And last night we had that Bethlehem star that was up there. Um, and again, if you, if you saw the video, the Bethlehem Star, which I posted in the other video, or you can look it up on YouTube, it's not my work. Um, I should give him credit here, though, but I'll, I'll just put that in the show notes. Um, it's a completely different alignment. That alignment was with Jupiter and Regulus, which was the king star, and then Venus. So, completely different alignment. In, uh, than what we're looking at with Jupiter and Saturn. So, is it a cool alignment? Yeah, you bet. I like that. Is it the Bethlehem star? Not even close. So, let us not be deceived, but let us turn to the scriptures to find out what, uh, what we need to see. Because that alignment of the Bethlehem star is actually recorded in Revelation um, and also at the birth of Christ. So, there's just so many nuggets in here. But anyway, for this lesson, because I don't want to keep you, is we're going to focus on this particular lesson on looking at some things in the genealogies. And then next, we're going to go back to answer the question, the prophecy of Christ. Why do we even need a Savior? Why the birth of Christ? And uh, But in order to do that, we need to touch on the genealogies because I need to lay some groundwork. It's... It's an interesting concept because wherever you start, you have to either go forward or backwards. And the reason for that is this. The Old Testament prophesies of the New Testament. Okay? So the prophecies of the Old Testament are fulfilled by the New. So the, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. So you can't have one without the other. And really, the two most important things, or two most important passages, scriptures, verses, Genesis 1, 2, and 3. If we can't really understand what happens in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, that's the foundation of the Bible. And we're going to get there in this, um, after we cover the... Uh, the genealogies here and some, and some different things here. So hopefully you've read those or listened to me reading those, whichever suits your fancy. Um, and maybe made some notes. Write some notes in the scriptures. Write down some questions. Uh, if I don't answer them here, then uh, maybe we can correspond back and forth and I'll uh, put those answers up in a frequently asked question lesson. So let's do this. We're going to start in Matthew 1. And the reason we're going to start there is because you have to pick a place. And Matthew begins with 1-1. One, one. He starts with the genealogies. So let's look at those and then compare that with Luke's genealogy. 
So here we go. So the book book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So in Matthew, he's actually starting out with Jesus Christ, who's the son of David, who's the son of Abraham. Nothing wrong with that. That's just a starting point. But two key things. He's starting with Abraham. Now remember, it was Abraham, and again, we'll have to look forward and backward, Abraham received the promise of God that he would be the father of many nations, that he would bring his people back into that land where they were created. Where is that land? That's the garden. That's that garden of perfection um, that we're going to go back to in the next lesson when we get back there. So everything's going to take us back to the beginning. And this promise is made to Abraham, and then it goes through and it sets up, because they want to be able to follow what's going on. And the reason why is we'll see in Genesis 3.15. But we're not going to go there yet. But all of these um, genealogies are important because we'll see that when we look at the seed of the woman. So it all, it all connects. So Abraham beget Isaac. Isaac beget Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Okay? And Israel, excuse me, and Jacob beget Judas and his brethren. So right there, we can clearly see that Judas is mentioned. Why? Because it's Jesus is the tri, is the son of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus comes through the lineage of Judah. So that's where we're we're coming through there. And Judas beget Perez and Zerah of Tamar. Tamar, we'll see, shows up in that Seed of the Woman video. Perez beget Esram. Esram beget Aram. Aram beget Abminadab. Abminadab beget Nason. Nason beget Salmon. Salmon beget Boaz of Rachel. Uh, we will see that Rachel also appears in the Seed of the Woman video. And here's a clue. Uh, we'll see this here. And Boaz beget Obed of Ruth. Anytime you see, like, Boaz of Rachab or Obed of Ruth, there's a reason for that. There's a reason those women are put in there like that because it's very, very significant. And we'll see that when we study that seed of the woman video. Um, and I'll tell you more about that story when we get there. And then Obed beget Jesse, and Jesse beget David, the king. David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Highlighted and underlined. Why? Let me pause this just a moment. Okay, I'm back. I had to take a short pause. So why is this who had been the wife of Urias important? Because in the story of King David, King David uh, was prophesied by God to be the new up-and-coming king. And he had, when he, well, and again, it's a long story, but Urias, uh, that is Bathsheba. You may know the biblical story of Bathsheba. They don't mention her by name here because it's important that had been the wife of Urias. Urias, we'll see in the seat of the woman, was a Hittite. And the Hittites were part of that fallen race out of Genesis 6, the iniquity of the Amorites, and therefore she was rescued, if you will, um, by King David. That's a whole nother story, but I want to put that in here because there's a reason for all these begats. Okay? And she had Solomon, and Solomon begat Roboam, and Roboam begat Abia, Abia begat Asa, and Asa begat Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Oasis. And we'll go all the way down through. And then in Matthew 1.11, that's where they're carried away into Babylon. That's after the fall of that uh, temple period as a, result of Sol uh, as a result of Solomon and some different things. Again, more in there. But then we get all the way down here to the end. And it says, and Eluid... Eluid beget Eleazar, Eleazar beget 
Matan, and Matan beget Jacob, and Jacob beget Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus, of who was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. So here, we got a parallel, because in the beginning we had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Joseph was actually one of the tribes. He was a coat of many colors. He was the one that was carried away into Egypt, sold into slavery, if you will, but then rose to great power and influence in Egypt. So it's interesting to note that we have that same parallel here in this scripture. But here's what I want you to see. Jacob beget Joseph. Joseph was the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. The next section lists out that there is 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David until the carrying away of Babylon, or, excuse me, 14 generations from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ. So it's divided up into epochs or covenants, if you will, uh, of 14 different generations. So let's go look at the genealogy and look and see if there's a difference. Okay. And that starts down here in Luke 38. Okay. Because this goes, Matthew started with Abraham and come forward. Luke is going backwards. It says, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Now that is important. Because that word right there, supposed, if I turn on my uh, King James Version here, where I can pull up my concordance, and I'll show you guys how to use this e-sword um, in another video. Um, I'll do it how we study the Bible. It'll be in that one. Sorry, let me get back up here. There's a little tricky on the eyes here. Supposed. Supposed means properly to do by law, that is to custom, passively or usual, by extension or deemed to regard, supposed to think, to be in want. Um, to do by law. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a custom. This is not a, uh, he was the supposed son. So what that is, is that in this situation, basically it's their son-in-law. That's what this is going to. He was going to be the son-in-law. He was the supposed son of Joseph, um, which was the son of Heli. So again, we see something different. We still have Joseph, but this is Heli. And Heli's name means, and I haven't looked this up yet, um, Eli or an Israelite. Uh, that is just a Hebrew origin name. Okay, now, so we're going to go from Heli backwards, because that was the son of Matan, that was the son of Levi, which was the son of Jana. We're going to go all the way back to Nahum, to Zerubbabel, Matan, Simeon, okay, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of jo Jonan, which was the son of Elohim. Scroll on back. There's a lot of these, and there's a reason for that. And I didn't highlight it here. Oh, because it's highlighted over here. Excuse me. As we go on back through, I want you to get back to this part, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph. So we've got Simeon, Judah, Joseph, Jonan, which was the son of Elohim, which was the son of Melah, which was the son of Menon, which was the son of Mahatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. So this is what's important. This genealogy comes through Nathan, not Solomon. So the genealogy of Solomon 
genealogy of Solomon goes from Abraham through Solomon to Joseph. This genealogy goes from David to Nathan. Solomon to Nathan, David to Solomon, David to Nathan. See the difference? Now let's go on further. Because we're going to go backwards. Which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Solomon. So we can see that we come in congruent here. Because we've got Jesse, we've got Obed, we've got Boaz, we've got Simon, just like we saw in Matthew. But excuse me. But the these ends to Jesus are a little different, and that's because the split at Nathan and Solomon. And that's very important. Which was the son of Aninabad, which was the son of Aram, Esram, son of Phares, son of Judah. We're going to see we're going backwards. The son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Therah, which was the son of Nathan. So see, we're here at Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We've got the same genealogy back to Abraham. But here's the awesome part is it goes all the way back, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Okay, so let's think about that a minute. Matthew is going from the promise of Abraham up to David through Solomon. David to Solomon. In Luke, goes from Adam all the way to Adam, all the way through the tribes of Israel, up to Abraham, through Nathan, down to Jesus, Joseph and Jesus. And here it says, right in the beginning there, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Pilate, being as the supposed son. So if we know in Matthew, if we know in Matthew that Joseph is the son of mm, right here, like I said, it takes a while. that Joseph is the husband of Mary and the son of Jacob and then over here in 338 we see he's the supposed son of Heli that means son-in-law so guess what this is this is Mary's genealogy Joseph comes through Solomon as an in-law, Mary comes to Heli, comes to Nathan, down to Heli. And we can see that again after when we see the fall of Israel, after Solomon, there are some very bad kings, and the scepter departs from Judah. So this whole genealogy through Solomon is irrelevant in a sense that Jesus is of the tribe of Judah, but he's not of the tribe of Solomon. And that will raise some hairs on the back necks of some people because most of Scripture talks about the lineage of the kingship. The kingship comes through Mary. It doesn't come through the male. Well, how do we know that? And that's what takes us back to Genesis 3.15. Remember I said earlier in the first one, once I start in Scripture here, I end up back in Genesis. Because we have to know our foundation. So that is something that's very important with these genealogies that you must see. Uh, there's a lot more in here, but since this particular lesson is focusing on the birth of Christ, I'm going to leave it at that. And um, we're going to, in our next video, we're going to go back to Genesis 3. Because we need to go back to the beginning to see why did Jesus come through Nathan? Why did Jesus have to come through Mary, the virgin? Why do we have to have this? Why do we even have to have a Savior, first of all? 
And those answers are found in the beginning because God established man with a purpose. That purpose was thwarted. Man lost his purpose. And it's Jesus is, the, is who comes to redeem us back to that garden principle. So with that, I'm going to stop this video, uh, get this one uploaded, and then we're going to go on back to Genesis 3, or actually in the beginning, Genesis 1, 2, and 3, to take a look at that. Okay, so with that, thank you. That's something important I wanted to show you here. We're going to come back to this too, so there's going to be more in here as time goes on, um, but that's what I want to focus on in that particular session. So with that, thank you, God bless you, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the next chapter.